Hey yo, it's Nitrix Knight and I hope you're having a fantastic day and in today's video we will be talking about the evolution of the X-Men in television. We will not be covering the evolution of the X-Men on film because they've only had one franchise it should be pretty easy to follow the production order of it. They've only had the main timeline X-Men films, the future timeline, a crossover and Wolverine and Deadpool spin-offs. The chronological order is really hard to follow, but production-wise, for viewing pleasure, it should be easy enough. If you like the video at any point in time, make sure to go down and click the like button, subscribe button, and turn on post notifications so you know when a new video goes live. It'll help me out a ton, and it'll show me that you like these types of videos. And with that out of the way, let's begin. To start us off, we have to go all the way back to the 1960s, where Marvel produced a show called The Marvel Superheroes, which focused on obviously different superheroes in a comic book-like format. This version of the roster only consisted of the original lineup, which included Cyclops, Beast, Marvel Girl, who was Jean Grey, Angel, and Iceman. And fun fact, instead of being called the X-Men in the series, they were called the Allies for Peace. Skipping a couple decades, we make our way to the 1980s, where we see them again in Spider-Man and his amazing friends. So in this amazing friends team, there's already an X-Men with Iceman, but later on as we go through the series, we see the entire team, which consists of their newer lineup, with Storm, Angel, Cyclops, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler. And I think Colossus also appears. By the end of the decade, Marvel produces a pilot episode for a show that would be called Pride of the X-Men, which would have focused on Kitty Pride Shadowcat as the main character. This, of course, as most X-Men fans know, is the basis for the widely popular 90s X-Men show. And fun fact, it had an Australian Wolverine. So it's somewhat foreshadowed Hugh Jackman playing the character a decade later. 1992 finally rolls along and gives us the greatest, one of the greatest cartoons of all time and in probably the top 5 greatest cartoons of the 90s, it's of course X-Men the Animated Series. It doesn't matter what you think of the show, the soundtrack, specifically the main theme is banging. The stories the show told were complex, engaging, exciting, just overall fun. It was just, just like Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, Spider-Man the Animated Series, these shows are what made us become fans in the first place. And made us fall in love with these universes. Both of these, all these cartoons that I've mentioned started off their respective animated universes for more things to come in the future. Speaking of connected universes, when Spider-Man the animated series season 2 was about to finish, they did a little arc called the Mutant Agenda where Spider-Man teamed up with the X-Men, therefore validating that a shared universe could be done. The DCAU was also started off around this time, so being the comic book animated universes were just moving in full gear, a decade before the MCU was even a, a thought. And later, they even had like a brief cameo in the Fantastic Four series along with Scarlet Spider. With all of this success, there is of course bound to be a misstep, and this is where the first live action show appears, Generation X. Do you guys remember this? I have no clue what this was before searching this up. It's just a Jubilee movie. It was supposed to be a pilot for a TV show, but it was never going to get off the ground, so they just decided to do a little short live action TV only movie. It's, it's horrible. Let's move on. Now we've just hit the 2000s and the X-Men were literally just about to explode in popularity. This will be the first time an X-Men film would be made and the X-Men Evolution cartoon was just debuting for the first time and this show was a great spiritual successor to the 90s cartoon. It was a modernized version of the X-Men. The X-Men were younger, less experienced, and while there were some weird decisions made, it was overall a banger show, which lasted over four seasons, so a pretty good runtime. This may be a little bit of a cheat because the X-Men didn't exactly appear in this show, but in the underrated CG somewhat canon Sam Raimi Spider-Man show, called Spider-Man the new animated series, there were hints and mentions of the X-Men. One time Spider-Man was asking or saying a quip 
about I bet the X-Men get to go to parties and even when the cops are chasing at him they called him like a mutant freak so there were some hints of the X-Men being out and about in the Raimi-verse which is pretty interesting however this is a somewhat canon kind of canon show it's kind of like how Batman Gotham Knights that Batman anime that came out was connected to the Chris Christopher Nolan shows but after a while they considered it non-canon after the last movie came out speaking of batman nice transition hey let's go there's a mini mates x-men show not really show it's a little mini movie that came out on dvd it's a little bonus called x-men dark tides it's pretty similar to this one they did before called batman new times it's just a little short showing the normal adventures these characters would do the x-men they just had to do a mission to fight or find out where the brotherhood of evil were these characters of course are magneto juggernaut mystique etc and just take them down for the batman one they just had to find joker take him down it's pretty simple wolverine and the x-men debuted on january 23rd 2009 and while it didn't have critical success only lasting one season it was still pretty unique in its own way having wolverine as the main character like he was definitively the main character he was the leader of the x-men cyclops had to move away like back off the entire show which you would expect by the title of it and kevin feige was the executive producer of the show making it one of his earliest works at marvel and of course marvel's goofiest show marvel's superhero squad had its own version of the x-men it had its own version of basically every major marvel character from spider-man even though he's in like soft tie-ins like video games and comics and even the punisher these versions are chibi like they're more comedic obviously but they still hold on to the values of each character similarly to the new teen titans animated shorts on that dc nation block if any of you seen that on cartoon network it just holds the ideals of these characters even if it's used in a goofy manner just to make fun of it still makes them feel unique in their own way some of you might not know this but in 2010 there was like a four series like collaboration with the madhouse japanese animation studio which basically had marvel characters in an anime format for like direct-to-video releases and one of those was the x-men series which i actually think is pretty good i actually recommend you watching it it's on netflix right now and it's pretty good i'm not going to spoil anything any further just watch it just watch it next up we have legion which is an fx exclusive show so it follows a character called david holler who is the son of professor x charles xavier and his gimmick is that he has DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, and every time he switches to his alters, he gains a new ability. His main thing is that he has like reality warping, matter manipulation, something like that, but to gain certain effects, he has to switch alters. His main personality, David Holler, doesn't have any abilities whatsoever. It's a psychological thriller type of show which lasted three seasons, which in my opinion is pretty respectable. Now, moving back to the network that started the genius, we're gonna move to Fox, and they're presenting us with The Gifted. This is a show I have not seen yet. I don't know if it's good or not. The reviews I've seen look pretty respectable, but it does seem like it's going back to the kids discovering their mutant abilities in an urban environment, which of course, of course, will lead to disaster. But looking at the trailer, it does seem pretty interesting enough to check it out. It did last only two seasons, and it was canceled from poor viewership, so maybe this will be a little gem, a hidden gem. Making our way out of the 2010s, we will be seeing the resurrection of the 90s X-Men series, and it will be called X-Men 97. So I'm kind of indifferent about this show. Like, on the one hand, I'm excited for it, and on the other hand, I'm like, it's Disney and they're probably gonna mess it up. Revived shows are never, in some cases they're good, like the Clone Wars, they've been pretty good, but in most cases, it doesn't work really well. Looking at the Book of Boba Fett show has me really worried about this, but fingers crossed Disney can pull it off so that kids of today will be able to experience the magic that was 90s X-Men. And that's the end of the video. If you liked it, make sure to go down, click the subscribe button. It helps out a ton. Thank you. And before I go, I'm going to leave you with a question. How many X-Men members do you think will be in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness? We already know Professor X will be there as a variant, but who else do you think? Sign off in the comments below. Take care.